All right, next question. What are your views on survival solutions to a system shutdown uh, and or collapse? Well, yeah, that's a good question. I, I'm, I get nervous about survivalism because, as, as I'm sure many of you know, it can be taken to, to an extreme. But I think, I, I, I think there are some, some sensible uh, solutions. The, I mean, ideally, ideally our homes, whether we lived in a city, a town or a community, would be self-sustainable with or without the grid. <clears throat> Unfortunately, you find the, 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 the three things, the, the three things that, or four things actually, that are crucial to keep in mind always. One is a breakdown of law and order, which is security. The second is a breakdown of food supply, which means food. A, a breakdown in, in energy, which means a self-sufficiency um, and uh, being able to um, have you know, water and fluids. So I said food and separate. So we could say food and water three. So security, food and water and energy are the three key things um, with your home. You know, worrying about whether you live on a mountain or near a river and so on, uh, you know, to me... Uh, you know, trying to predict um, whether you're going to get struck by lightning or get hit by a wave, to me that, that is not stuff that people should necessarily think about. If you live next to a volcano, sure, be aware you live next to a volcano. If you live in an incredibly unstable environment like Los Angeles, then just be aware you live in a very, very unstable environment. But on the security side, um, there's just general sensible things on security. In some countries, they will allow you to keep a firearm, but many countries have disarmed their population. On food, it's always good to have a, a, you know, have enough dry goods and supplies there, not go crazy, but certainly, you know, if there was a breakdown, you'd want to know that you've got something there for, that you could survive for a, a few weeks. And that doesn't mean you have to have a, a bunker for that. That's just, again, that's sensible. And the third, um, which is in terms of energy, it's looking at at how you can sustain. Do you have an alternative to heating beyond simply uh, electric and uh, and gas? You know, people having a wood fire. Um, these are things just to, that I think are worth having in mind, but I wouldn't suggest or recommend that people go to the extreme of building uh, uh, kits. I'll tell you one other thing that is always good to have, and it's good to have anyway, is have a evacuation plan for a home. Now, what do I mean by that? If your house is on fire and you have 10 minutes to get, or less than 10 minutes to get things out of that home, what are the one bag full of things that you would want to get out of that home? And I think it's always good to keep that in mind. Don't you think, Terry? Yes. Absolutely. So anyway, I hope and, that answers that question. Yeah. Well, in any situation, it's always a good, uh, you know, good thing to keep in mind, and a good plan to have. So, and there are places to get dry goods, dry foods, um, having plenty of water on hand, um, bottled water, things like that. Yeah. Um, all right. Great. Thank you, Frank. Next question. Can you talk about the Jesuits? Uh, what authority level do they have in the current system, and can they help people in any way? Wow. Well, that's uh, from our friend Guest25 again. Uh, they're pretty... <laughs> uh, we've, had, we've had talk shows where we've covered almost nothing but the Jesuits. So uh, I want to answer it on, on three levels. I'm going to say a couple of things now. They're going to be almost one-line summaries because there's literally too much to the question. I really hope you go back and listen to the previous talk shoes. If you want to know more about the Jesuits, then please go and have a look at a website called one, O-N-E hyphen evil.org. That's O-N-E hyphen evil.org. Go and have a look because there's some abundance of information there on the Jesuits. 
Uh, and now to the question. Um, what authority level do they have? Well, the Jesuits are the brain. If, if, if the New World Order was a body, you were looking at a, you know, the arms, the legs and so on, then the brain of that entity, of that monster, would be the Jesuits. That's the best way of explaining where the Jesuits fit in. That's how powerful they are. So if you think the brain, your brain, has something to do with what you do, then the New World Order Frankenstein brain would be the Jesuits. Um, can they help people in any way? Again, look at the history of the Jesuits and see that the last 80 years you have seen a marked uh, forgetfulness and separation of just how powerful the Jesuits are to the ruling families. And for the first time since the Jesuits were formed, there appears, appears to be separate agendas between the Jesuits' view of fulfillment of, of the world and the ruling family's desperation to see the system continue. So does that mean the Jesuits are doing the right thing? Look, they're a big order of super intelligent people. Just like any organization, there are political groups, there are factions within factions. So I don't, I don't have privy enough to tell you collectively whether the Jesuits are moving towards a good or a bad. Have they got the capacity to change things? Absolutely. There is probably no other group on the planet that collectively has the intellectual power and the self-discipline to affect the kind of change we're talking about. Are they doing it? I, I, I don't have enough evidence to say yes or no at this point. So anyway, guess 25, go and have a look at those things. But uh, you asked some honest but some very big questions. So I'm sorry if you don't feel I've given you enough flesh. But go and have a look at the, that website. All right, good. Thank you, Frank. Let's go back over here to uh, Ron. Ron's back in a queue. Hello, Ron. Hello, Frank. <laughs> hey, you Ron. knew I'd be calling back, but hey. Yeah, I knew that. That's right. Yeah, some people on the, the chat were asking me about the, the 709. Now, 709 is an IRS form, and... Right. Uh, I think I had mentioned a little bit about it last week, but what I'm doing or what I have done is I have prepared a a complaint and claim against the IRS and the DOJ, and I'm filing it into the Court of Claims, the Federal Court of Claims. Now, while I was preparing that complaint, I had to prepare a large quantity of exhibits. I have done all of that now. I know exactly how they're doing it to us. Mm. So let me explain. And then I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare a self-help package like I did for the foreclosures yep. so people can actually start using the 709 instead of a 1040, and they'll get all of their tax money back. Yep. Yep. So this is, this is what they do. There is uh, when we – Go to work for an employer, we fill out a W-4, it's a voluntary withholding form, and it's classified as a tax class 5 form. And this is in the um, Internal Revenue Manual 6209, which I'll provide. Then when the employer issues a W-2 back to us at the end of the year, that's considered a tax class 5 form with tax class five gift income on it reported okay yeah so what we have to do is use the proper form which is the 709 it's a gift in a state tax form the form has on it a built-in unified tax credit and i just checked for uh 2010 form and uh they've dropped it from 
five down to three hundred and thirty thousand dollars, and that's over a lifetime of earning. Okay. Yep. So, um, what they what the IRS has done in all of its document coding, there's one code block that's used for uh, identifying the tax class. And what they do in the computer is convert it from a tax class 5 to a 2. Well, a 2 is an individual corporate tax income, which gets reported on a 1040, which is a class tax 2 form. Yep. So that's how they've done the fraud. It's massive. They do it millions of times a day, every day of the year. Is there a process that they take internally, at least, to 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 uh, turn the the chicken into the egg? In other words, to turn the tax tax class five to the tax class two, or it are they must, simply ignoring it? No, what they I I think what's happening is when they uh, receive a W two from an employer, that is that when that when that uh, money is co is entered into the system. That's when it goes from a five to a two. Okay. Right. All right. I got you. Yep. All right. So okay. So they're they're basically doing they're they're arguing I I guess um, on consent um, or 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 non non objection to um, changing your status. It's just it's just, it's the old cane shell game. Yep. Well, yeah. it's it's worse than that. Nobody knew about this. I have well, been in the tax protest movement for 15 years. I just learned about it three months ago. Yep. It's that well, well hit. Well, I did say that the veil is lifting. You've heard that before. <laughs> oh, I think so. <laughs> I Rob, think thank I'm you. lifting the veil yeah. myself. <laughs> yeah, I think you are. Uh, well, a number uh, – let, let's, let's also to give – Fair due. There are there are a number of people that are contributing to that, and Ron, you're doing a fantastic job. I mean, the group, the team in Montana on foreclosures have done an yep. absolutely fantastic job, a wonderful job. I, I, I again, it, a couple of things that we need to do in terms of information. The site one heaven shouldn't strictly be into the nitty gritty of remedy. It should. I hope you agree with this. I hope well, I'd like your feedback. I feel it should be, you know, we have a range of court sites that are coming online, right. which is where you lodge your paperwork and, and effectively mirror a docket. Um, I, I feel as we develop this, in addition to what you're putting onto the University of Acadia site, I, I think we need to, to really do a whole revamp for folks on uh, and a much, much easier access to the information. Don't you agree? Oh, I do. Can so, I use one yeah. heaven? <laughs> yeah, well, one one heaven, I think, ultimately should should be the should be a, a site listing the law and listing um, a higher level. But on a on a practical level, this is the kind of material that should be on America's Union Court, America's Union. You know what I'm saying? Oh, sure. So, Ron, great work. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you, for, uh, thank you, Frank, and thank you, Ron. Um, uh, that was some of the uh, chat going on over there, Frank. I didn't know if you had seen that, and I think that's going to help folks quite a bit with that. And, uh, again, thank you, Ron. Thanks for letting Ron cover that a little bit because he did start on that last week. Uh, we right. have Montana on the phone line. Hi, this Hello. is Dawn. How are you? Hi, Dawn. Good. Hi. Good. Good. Hey, I'm sorry. I had the flu for about two weeks, and so I was just double-checking if all of the uh, mortgage information came through and was easy for you guys to put together. And, uh, you know, you guys have my permission, or I don't want to hold anybody back from adding to it and condensing it down. No, it's been it's been wonderful. In fact, um you have a an increasingly growing fan club out there. Uh, I, mean, I, can't, I can't tell you how many people uh, I've heard, uh, quite apart from the information, who just love the fact that you 